of Ephesians 2, 4 through 7, I want to simply ask the question and then try to answer it with implications why Paul broke the sentence off, inserted this phrase, by grace you have been saved, closed it up again, and continued. Why here? Why right here? But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. Dash. By grace you've been saved. Close the dash. And raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. We were dead in our trespasses. He had already said it before. He's saying it again. Dead in our trespasses. That's the people that he made alive. Us who were dead. Us who were dead in our law-breaking. By grace you've been saved. As if to draw attention to the fact that when you make someone alive who's dead, and when you make someone alive who's dead in trespasses, grace is shining particularly. Why would that be? And my answer is this. Trespasses draws attention to the fact that we are undeserving. And deadness draws attention to the fact that we are unable. And this particularly matters. Most of us realize that grace is a response to the fact that we don't deserve to be saved. We don't deserve to be made alive. But not many people focus, not as many people, focus on the fact that grace is a response to our inability, not just our undeserving. So here's the way I'm going to define grace. Grace, God's grace. What is it? His inclining and acting. And I put those two there because it's not just God's action while his heart remains indifferent. He doesn't really care whether we get life or get salvation. No, he cares a lot. And he doesn't just care, he acts. So his grace is his inclining and his acting to give his chosen ones, and I say that because of chapter 1, verses 4 and 5, he chose us in Christ Jesus to be holy and blameless. He predestined us for sonship. So this, this us here that he made alive are the ones he chose from the beginning before the foundation of the world. So his inclining and his acting to give his chosen ones life he made alive. And I'm going to add, lest we think it's some kind of boring life, and joy, and I could insert eternal joy because right here it says, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us. He's going to spend eternity increasingly making his kindness manifest in our lives. Hence, everlasting life and joy. And here's what makes it grace. When we could not 
could not, that's inability, could not welcome it. In other words, we were dead. If he showed us this gift of his kindness to us, we would say, baloney, boring. I want some more, what? I want to walk according to this age. I want to walk in the power of the present, in the prince of the power of the air. I want to live in my passions of my flesh. I want the desires of the body and the mind. That's what deadness means. And so we could not welcome it and did not deserve it. That's what I think grace is. And I think Paul inserted this little phrase here, by grace you've been saved, right after saying you're dead, and you're dead in law-breaking that brings down the wrath of God, meaning you don't deserve to be saved, you don't deserve to have life, and you couldn't welcome it even if you saw it. You are unable and un deserving. And so grace is inserted here, even though in verse 8, he's going to spell this out in more detail. So when we talk about grace, let's remember grace as God exerts it towards fallen human beings is not only his inclining and acting to give us life because we don't deserve it, It is also his inclining and acting to give us life when we cannot see it, cannot want it, and cannot do anything, including believe him for it. And he creates all of that by giving us life. That's divine grace.